if she's like, I just, I want to on you the first night, you go, like, yeah, go ahead. But, uh, Dan, did that happen? N I've never, uh, no. The other way has happened. You, you, somebody? you, you, someone? Dan, <laughs> be fun, tell us. Hey, everyone, welcome. To Girls on Guys, I'm your host Nina Tar, but you probably already know that. Today I got two really funny people, I'm really excited. Uh, first up, I have the hilarious, the talented, great stand-up comedian, also the host of Tea Time with Gabby Lamb, who we did an episode with her, uh, gosh, I believe that was like our fourth or fifth episode of Girls on Guys, so uh, check it out. But I am here with the beautiful, the lovely Harper Rose Drummond. Nailed it. Oh, Man, <laughs> if you are a listener of this podcast, you know, I don't really know how to speak or read. So it's pretty tough uh, for me. Uh, and then we also have joining us the very hilarious uh, sweetheart, wonderful man, great comedian, also has a great podcast called Dancers. Wow. I really, I love that name. Dan Donahue, yeah, welcome. You. It's like Answers, but spelled with a D. No one can ever find it, which is nice because it feels like a family. Wait, how come people can't find it? Because it's they say dancers and they look up dancers like people who dance. Um, and they think it's going to be about dancing. And it's not. Do you dance? No. That not even a little? In private. I, I Well, in private and I, I will in public. It's really hard for me to. And it feels like I'm pas pushing past my own boundaries. But I'd like to live on the edge and I like to really push those. Whoa. What about wedding? Wedding vibe? You're Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I'll dance. I mean, I will and I'll feel really self-conscious while I'll do it. And I'll it'll be work and I'll push through it. Wow, what a brave soul. Yeah, Thank you for awesome. letting us in. I feel like we just got like a really intense peek behind your curtain. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? You a dancer? I love to dance. I'm not very good at it, but I love it. That's like how I feel about singing. I love karaoke and I sing disgust. Have you heard my voice? I sound like fucking Lou Reed with like a asthma attack. It's so <laughs> terrible. I, mean, I no, sound I'm like sure a great singer with an asthma attack. Have you, first of all, have you heard him sing? He just, he can't really sing. So, he sings like this. Well, that's great. All the time. Ba -ba -da 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 -da, you know? I'm He's a I'm vibe not. king. He is. Mm -hmm. Also, a classic dickhead. Love that. Period. Oh, it, was he a dickhead? Yeah, he's like notoriously one of the most difficult people. Like if you think Bob Dylan in interviews is difficult, Lou Reed will be like, hey, so your album Transformer, he's like, I've never heard of it. <laughs> and they're like, okay, so moving on. He's like, what? Like he's a An dickhead. An enchanting person to interview. There's a really good story that a friend told me uh, who lives in New York about him who's a bit older. He said, I was in line at a movie theater, like the Metrograph or something like that. And Lou Reed cuts in front of me in the line. And I'm just like, uh, hey, and Lou Reed turns around and goes, what the fuck are you going to say to me? He's <laughs> just like, yeah, you're Lou Reed. You're allowed to cut. Well, you what's know? so funny is I would have no idea that Lou Reed was Lou Reed because I don't know what he looks like. So I would, I think I would probably like get into an altercation with Lou Reed. In oh my way. God. I would want to get, I want to know what movie he was. But if he like did that for like Herbie Fully Loaded or something, <laughs> <laughs> this was all like, I'm actually cut. I got to do this for my fucking art. Dude. <laughs> are you, are you a fighter? A fight? Oh, uh, no, not really. You get into altercations? I've, I've gotten into like, um, I, my friends have said about me that I'm kind of, uh, the word they use is out of pocket. And uh, okay. I can be a little bit uh, fiery in certain situations, but I also have been trying to dial that back. What situation would would set you off that maybe your friends would be? Oh, you know, jarred. if you fucking if you talk about my mom, <laughs> my fucking family, never come between I, a man and oh, woman. if you talk about my fucking girl or my family, I go fucking crazy. Um, no, I mean, sound like Mark uh, Wahlberg in the fucking fighter right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which uh, Mark Wahlberg, great, great man all around. <laughs> never did anything wrong. Um, great lifestyle choices. Great lifestyle choices. Well, I mean, he does. He wakes up at 3 a.m. to work out. That's psychotic. And then that's when his day starts. He goes to bed. At if you wake up at 3 in the morning, you are hiding bodies. You're also, yeah, there's you're, something fucked with you. There's something so sinister and so untrustworthy. And it's also like you wake up at 3 a.m. Like, what do you fucking do? Catch the morning paper with your teeth like you fucking weirdo? For some reason, I think with those guys, they like they've lived such a high octane life for their whole life that Mark Wahlberg is like, yeah, now I wake up at 3.38 because he did everything else. Like, you know, fucking uh, was on the cover of magazines, committed a hate crime. So now he opened up a I, burger restaurant, I opened up a burger restaurant, which are kind of the only three or four things you can do. So now he's just like, yeah, I did everything. And now I gave it all to Christ. And that's kind of his like life now. I hate that he he prays like if you when we saw that schedule of his, which is like one of the best things to see on the Internet. Really good. The prayer time. And also like he'll have like there's just like giant 
moments of just like, it'll be like, snack. And then it's like three hours yeah, for hours. a snack. And you're like, bro, what's going on here? Wow. And then he prays like five times a day. I'm like, sweetheart, I think you're Muslim. Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure with this yeah. fucking prayer time. You could trick Mark Wahlberg into being Muslim. <laughs> yeah. You could definitely do that. It's like, yeah, I moved from five prayers a day to six prayers a day. I face a certain direction because Donnie fucking told me. To. I wash wow. my feet before I do it. So I'm not committing haram. Oh. And Doesn't um, The Rock and then also Kevin Hart also wake up at like an egregious time? Yeah, I'm sure they are. Do you think that these people have like a good life or are they like... Well, a lot of them never had real jobs and I think they kind of like to simulate those sorts of things. That's why I see when it comes to like incredibly intense morning routines, you see that coming from people who don't work real job, like don't have real lives oh God, in a real... Right. It's like ex-military guys or dudes who actually functionally have to work for two hours a day so they have to like add extra meaning and suffering to their lives. Oh yeah, a lot of people do have like a kind of like a uh, monk with a hair short kind of uh, hair yes. short kind of vibe to their life, where they have to like oh they're like I just do this. They do things difficultly in order to. I think it's really they might not even be uh, aware of it. I think it's something this like subconscious type of punishment that they're enduring right. in order to feel like they're making progress. You know how some people just like work to their fucking uh, they'll work to the blue in the face. It's like you're not really even getting work done. You're just kind of pretending progress. You're spinning your wheels, yeah. Yeah, which feels good sometimes to just get shit done, but you're not really doing fucking anything productive. Like a three-hour snack isn't gonna... <laughs> that's not gonna do anything for us, but, you know, love and for like him. him. But here's the thing. With Kevin Hart, I think his, he did have a lot of real jobs. I think he is, like... I think he's, like, addicted to, like, the chaos, though, because he, like, goes hard with everything else, he had a show about taking ice baths. Like, what the fuck is that? I like an ice bath. Okay, don't. It's fun. Why, do, why are guys so into it? You know, I don't know. I think like uh, I think like probably the level of intensity drives guys there, but it is like functionally healthy for you. Yeah, I know that, but it's yeah. like I feel like some guys are into it because I'm like they're just like I just want to feel something, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like just it can definitely anything self punishment. Well, that's like the the line I've I've told, which is really difficult. Is like I do like having a morning routine. I do like intensity, but like you can kind of go too far where you like realize, oh, all I did today was like the preparation for the day that never really happened. That's like oh, that's funny. That's yeah. a lot of issue I have with a lot of people. People, uh, I don't want to paint a white brush, but a lot of people in Los Angeles, I'm like, they'll be like, you know, right now I'm just really focusing on myself and doing things right. that I can do um, to just help me and my <laughs> spiritual growth and all of that. I'm like, well, you know, you could actually get something done if you weren't so solipsistically obsessed with yourself because there's just this masturbatory cycle of like, I'm just working on myself. It's like you could also just, I don't know. Creation is quite cathartic as well. And I think you find yourself in doing other things that don't necessarily pertain to you just solving yourself. I think that's why people love fucking uh, astrology because they're just like, how can I talk about myself but in like an abstract way? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't Whoa, seem like I'm talking about myself. Your eyes are so cool. Thank that was you. really cool. Yeah. Thank you. I know, I was just like transfixed. I'm happy you yeah. just called that out. I was yeah. like, whoa. Thanks, I can only do one of my eyes. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah no, this is a haunted house of a face. Okay, guys. that's it's a cool. Fun house mirror. Okay, I'm like not to take away from the message because the message was banging and we were listening right. you know, <laughs> and, and another thing about that is like uh, I think when you talk about solipsism the big issue that I mean Especially in this city, but I think everywhere is like people will be like why do I feel so like and it's because you're only doing things for yourself From like the beginning of the day to the end of the day Yeah, literally. And we're like communal creatures who should be kind of like existing in a world where we're not just fucking like journaling all day It's like that shit's great like meditating journal. I, I like do all that stuff But it's like when you see people who are fundamentally unhappy It's like yeah a lot of the time it's because you're not actually connecting to the world outside of yourself because you're just doing Shit for you from the time like you wake up to the time you go to sleep also, go tell someone in fucking Michigan or even Temecula. Go go tell someone who's like working a real fucking job. You're like, um, I wake up and I just kind of jerk myself off creatively <laughs> right. all day. It's like they are going to stone you and I'm going to support it. Like, that's I know. just annoying as hell. Well, I remember like, you know, you take on kind of routines that that should be be good for your mental health and your well-being and all that like I would I used to meditate every day I'm not as good as in I would do like morning pages and I would do all of these things in order to to make sure that I have a really good head on my shoulders as I go through my day and then I kind of like you lax and you kind of lose the fucking momentum of doing the routine and then a few months pass and you're like oh I haven't done that in a while and you're like 
nothing's changed. Like, I don't feel more unhappy. I don't feel there is nothing. I, I just now have removed this two hour like pl- like thing in my life that I thought I should be doing because I thought without it, I would crumble mentally and or emotionally. But I don't know. I think more people need to do things. And but you you know what's cool? You do a lot of like volunteer work, which I really admire. Yeah, it, it's Wayne, but I do still try to like. Wh- you know what it is? Whenever I feel like uh, bad or um, I, I like the clawing sort of uh, dissatisfaction that you have with life. Sometimes I always like <laughs> one of the things in my I, what I, this sounds so. Uh, shitty but like in the arsenal of things i can do to like make myself feel better i just heard this thing a long time ago where they were like in a lot of other countries when you're feeling like when you're feeling bad in america the thing people always say is like well go do something for yourself like self-care go do like but in a lot of other countries they're like go do something for someone else if you're feeling bad it's like well go do something for someone else like go go do some shit that that's such a different perspective you're totally right i never thought about it like that but it's it's so true but but you get in this like psych this like cyclical sort of uh lifestyle of just like i feel bad so i'm going to help myself and it's me 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 and it's like yeah well if you're feeling shitty like there's literally a guy who doesn't have a house outside of your apartment like yeah just give him some socks or some shit like and then people will be like oh well you're not functionally helping the and it's like yeah well it's not about it's like i did a thing that made someone for a moment feel a little bit better that's all i give a shit about like i don't fucking care yeah i'm not gonna solve the fucking you know how own house crisis with this shit but it's gonna make me feel better for a second that's the funny thing they don't realize that that's also how just in general how people feel better it's like you're not gonna solve anything it's like you know when somebody just likes like a barista's like hey you want a free cookie and you're like that's so nice they didn't solve anything for you but like wow like i kind of believe in humanity a little bit more now thank you so much exactly like yeah sure you still have bv and you still have debt but like (laughs) at least you have that cookie (laughs) yeah exactly and honestly dan i think it was like in like 2020 or so like early 2020 i legit did think you were going to solve the entire housing (laughs) crisis because i said that man is busy didn't even make a dent okay and we love it (laughs) all right guys let's snap into some questions because we got a few of them and uh, we're talking about really nice things, and I'm just I'm like I'm like first of all snowballing, come eating, kinky or no, let's we'll save that one for later. <laughs> save that one for later. Um, yeah, and I start crying. Okay, that's, yeah. the voice, that's the voice snowballing should be said in. Snowballing. Yeah. What yeah. do you guys think about it? Eating cum, you want to chew? Hey, I'm fucking sex biscuits. positive over here. Hey. Oh my god, I'm trying to experiment with my body. <laughs> I'm um, so sex negative, I can't do the voice. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll start with that one. Yeah, someone said snowballing, oh, come eating. Actually a question. No, it yeah, is. Yeah. I swear to God, <laughs> snowballing slash come eating. I didn't know what snowballing was called, and I'm glad that they clarified. Come eating, hot and kinky or weird. Go to church. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. I've never done it. You've never eaten your own cum. No, I don't. I feel like women don't have cum; they just have no. like residue. But you've you've swallowed a man's cum. Yes, of course. What if you didn't? Okay, <laughs> Dan, have you ever had a beach and then the girl swall or she has your cum in her mouth and she goes up to give you a little <laughs> kiss and then she puts the cum your cum in your tum. Okay, she while well, she's kissing, she cum, puts you her your cum it goes in your tummy. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting like the thinker right now. I know. Now. Why are you getting mad? Uh, Don't hit me. No, that's never <laughs> happened before, actually. Okay. It's never I, happened to me. Either. Because that's yeah. not what I heard. But okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, have you done it? Have I done the the thing that I just described to Dan? Yes. Not to Dan, but I'm saying I've like I've done you it to a man. You intentionally keep the cum in your mouth and then transfer it? or? Okay. I don't. I mean, okay. First off, I haven't slept with a man in over a year. So I'll, Why? But, We'll get into that because I'm gay. But, but when I That's before, <laughs> yes, I did that a couple times. I think it's fun. Yeah, it's okay. It's fun to get kind of nasty with it. Mm. I mean, but yeah. Also, maybe I loved the theater because I was like, maybe if I do all these crazy things, then I won't need to actually face what's going on inside. That's a big thing. And I think, well, and that's yeah. a digital footprint. So here we go. <laughs> I think that. There's a lot of things, though, that I, I have to ask people whether or not that they're really into something because of the sheer reason that it turns them on and they are aware of that. Or they're doing something performative that they have uh, ascertained from pornography. 
Oh, yes. And I think a lot of things, and I understand porn is hot, but I think sometimes it kind of clouds the judgment of you, what you actually want. Because I'm like, do you even like this? Mm -hmm. Or is it just something you've seen that you're like, wow. And I understand like giving yourself completely and sexually to somebody is very intimate and it's very hot. And I think that's like the part of like, you know, eating someone's comedy. It's like, I'll do anything. You know, I'll do, I'll go fucking hard. I'll do anything. Yeah. And I understand that in like a sexual context is really, that's great in a lot of ways. I think that's great. Um, I'm not, in, I'm not, I don't know. I like even, I'll swallow cum sometimes, but I'm like, a lot of times I'm like, just get this out of my mouth. I just don't, it's just, I gotta get out of here. I'm like, cool, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. No, if I'm like <laughs> honest like with you're like. Cho chomping on a stogie. Like, yeah. Oh, man, I gotta get out of here. Like, I gotta get this cum out of my mouth. Eh? You just leave the room doing this. I gotta go get the 12 train over to the Reseda. <laughs> oh, God. I'm like the little baby in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but instead of <laughs> oh. a stogie in my mouth, it's your man's cum. <laughs> oh. Capiche? I'll never have sex again. Ugh. Um, yeah, I don't think I think whatever it is kinky in a cool way, but if um, someone wanted that to happen every single time, this is what I like to think about. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're gonna like eat a man's ass, like you have to really think about is that something? Is that hot one time, or is that hot every single time? You know, it's, oh. is that something that you want to do every single time? But that you don't need to do it every time. You could do something like, you know, there's are sex so into it. Yeah, there is like sex tourism, I feel like, where you're like, I just want to kind of do this for a second. You know, I want to say some crazy shit in the bedroom or do something, you know, uh, that's a little off kilter. But you don't need to, you know, you got to spice it up, especially when you're with someone for years. I've been in a good amount of long term relationships and you got to like. Gotta do something. Holy and if they're not shit. swallowing their <laughs> own cum, <laughs> like two years in, then how is it gonna even last? No, yeah, you got it. Okay. To. Dance mad. No. <laughs> See, I have no issue, by the way, no issues like if a guy goes down on me and then we like make out, no issue with that. That's no. fine. That's totally yeah. fine. Or suck his dick, we make out, that's fine. Once we have a third party substance involved that is uh, a byproduct, it's waste, it's human waste. Then I just want to let's move on. Let's go. Let's get rid of it. It's like tampon. Okay, I'm not a diva cup girl. I think this is all going to connect. Okay, just stay with me. Sure. I don't like diva cups. Okay? okay. I don't like having this fucking shock, this rubber shot glass in you my don't pussy. Feel like it's kind of like medieval. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay. I don't want anything medieval. Okay. I don't want anything like okay. that. But I, I am like, because to me, they're like, oh, and then you just take it out, you dump it, and you wash it. I'm like, and then you put it back inside yourself. It's fucking like. I don't know. Period blood to me is human waste. I know some people are like, you gotta put it on your face and put it in your plants. I'm like, just you put it in the garbage. How about that? That's what it's for. You get your tampon filled with blood. Now it's a fucking vamoose. Get it out of here. Throw it in the garbage. Goodbye forever. I'm not fucking doing fucking arts and crafts with it. What are you listening it. to? <laughs> okay. People are telling you to put it in their plants. No, because people you on need, TikTok are. You need to and, look on TikTok. I, no, I don't. <laughs> you know I Gabby's don't. friend Joy, who we used to all live with? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. she she's like really big into this. She's like big into like I don't think she all the way does it, but like I, I think she's like in her heart she wants to. But she's I mean, hey, very hippieish. Very. Like, I know a period. girl who fed her plants uh, period blood and like didn't tell her roommate, and her roommate was like, <laughs> "Hey, what?" Yeah. And she's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, yeah, just you know." Listen, do whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's trying not to get canceled, but whatever. here's what it is. Yeah. I, if that's what I get canceled for, that, <laughs> that would be so funny. Really, really fucking funny. It's like Dan says we shouldn't fucking put period blood in the plant. I feel like I've he been hates women, <laughs> and it all comes out. But I feel like I'm desensitized because when you were saying human waste, like obviously I was thinking shit play. And then you started talking about period blood, and I was like, oh, that's bad? Like, no, no, no. I have period sex all the time. That's yeah. totally fine. There's no issue with that. But you're not trying to slurp on your own red juice. No, I'm not trying to put it on my face and be like, it's really good, actually, for the collagen production in your face. I'm like, just go to Sephora, bitch. Like, you no. don't need to fucking <laughs> Well, you can but... do what you were saying before. I think we started recording the, the PRP. Yeah. You can do that on your face. Yeah. And it helps heal broken bones, too. Beautiful. We so, love that. Modern technology. Get into it. Um, okay, so you used to date men, and now you are full out and only dating women. <sighs> She's, they's, and like former she's. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so trans men, trans women, and okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was the catalyst for you? Or is it something that you were like, I've always felt this way, but I just didn't have the, I just like, or are you just kind of, was it an evolving, was your sexual history kind of always evolving? You're like, you know what, I'm just not really into this anymore, and now I'm moving on. 
I like my first crushes I ever had were always on girls. Like I named my first like I got like a cat in kindergarten. I like named it after a girl in my class. Like okay, oh, am, I, am I creepy cute. or am I okay? Whatever. But I think um, that's cute. Okay, me too. Um, but so <laughs> and whatever. But okay, so but. The thing is, is like I, my parents weren't conservative or anything like that, but like I did predominantly grow up in the South and, you know, I have, I have like a healthy little dash of mommy issues. And so I definitely, um, I feel like I was people pleasing in a sense. And, you know, I just pleased my mom so much. I was sucking dick. And so, but then I was, I was always you like this mom. I, I, <laughs> Tell me how much. No. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. But anyway, and that's on making the guy swallow his own cum. Okay. But anyway, but so, um, yeah, but I, yeah. And, and I, whenever I would talk with my friends about like, um, their boyfriends or like whoever I was dating, I always felt like a, just kind of like a disconnect. I'm like, yeah. So we, like, we all hate being touched. Right. Oh, <laughs> okay. And then, or like, I could only fuck if I was really drunk. Oh, that's, that's the bad. I, all of my girlfriends who are gay say that they're like, they're like, you know, I tried it. And then I was like, Oh, I just completely have to disassociate when I fuck a man. Or like, yeah, like I have to like just go somewhere else completely. And then my friends were like, hey, do you want to know what that positive. is? Not normal and <laughs> yeah, a little sad. And I was like, <laughs> whoa, okay. But so, <laughs> but so we're figuring it out. But then, yeah, so then I started dating a girl. Like I think I was like 29 or something. And I got into like a serious relationship. And I was like, oh, this kind of feels like what I always was missing in a relationship with a man. And then I just am like really leaning into that. That's wonderful. So I guess I'm a gay lord. No, that's perfect. That's great. I mean, I'm I'm very happy for you because I think it's you know a lot of people they deny their own desires and needs uh, because it's tough. You know, being mm. it's like you know it's still like taboo, which is fucking insane. But like it's it's even that tabooness, even though like culture is like you know it's fine. Being gay is great, and you know being uh, fluid is great. A lot of times people have that negotiation they have to make with themselves because of the way they're raised. Like my parents are you know, very liberal, but I know that in their heart, if I like was gay, they'd be like, oh, that's <laughs> like, you know, cause and it's not because they're bigots in any way. I think that, I think that as a parent, you want to protect your child and you know that society can be very cruel to people that are uh, not straight. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, I don't want you, I don't want you to get hurt. You know, I think that it's a self-preservation, but it's also them trying to protect their child, you know? Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it sounds ignorant, but I think that's that's what it is. So good for you because I think some people they feel that and they just push through. I mean, they're just kind of like, okay, that's just what it is. Being having sex with a man is just like that, and that's what I chose. It's, in. it's normal to be dry. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, yeah, yeah well. exactly. Yeah, I mean, so good on you. Are you dating anybody right now? No. Are you dating anyone right now? Oh uh, no. No. Oh my God, singies. We got a little singles, singles mixer. Um, <laughs> we're going to edit that part out for sure. I'm 58 years old. <laughs> I'm like, singles mixer, let's go. Also, edit in me saying something really smart during that conversation, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you want to like do a stat or anything like that? <laughs> uh, do you have a type, Dan? No. 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 Any sort of... Yeah, it, personality wise type, I don't mean physically necessarily. I, like, I guess when I've gone on dates and I've considered them to go bad, which is actually like relatively rarely, I, I usually like have fun on dates, but like whenever the person isn't having fun or laughing or whatever, but that's more kind of on me, I feel. Oh. <laughs> when they don't like me, I know I usually that's that's like bad for me is when they don't like me. I think that if somebody, if you go on a first date with somebody and you don't, you're not getting along, I don't think yeah. that's usually anybody's fault. No I think fault. it's a, it's, there's just not compatibility there and it's kind of good that you learn then, you know, because sometimes like when I was single, I would like make jokes with guys and then they'd be like, I'm sorry, what? And I'm like, all right, well, this is never going to go well. <laughs> like, I'm like, for sure. So I shouldn't have done that Adam Sandler impression. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so funny because like sometimes you walk away from a first day and like that other person could possibly like very well potentially could be thinking like who the fuck could date that person? like who and the funny thing is like you can think that about them too and like a lot of times i think both of you walk away from a date going like who the fuck could ever date that person but yeah. it's just like that's how off people's chemistry can be that can mm -hmm. be that's always the best thing when you kind of are not into somebody simultaneously yeah just like, you know what nah yeah it's great oh i love that it's, it's really like good. it's worse when there's a yearning on one side which usually it happens like that but yeah there's definitely people here's the thing when i was dating uh because i like i said i've been in a lot of long-term relationships and then in between i would like date quite a bit 
And uh, whenever I would date, I was like, people in general, I'd say like 98% of people are so aggressively boring. Bleh. It's, I, I, I have never been more bored in my life than just dating. Just dating people where they're like, just saying, like, you don't even feel like they genuinely give a fuck about what they're talking about to you. And you're like, what are we doing here? No, because <laughs> you just honestly just awakened like a monster in me because I, I like I feel like I just had all the bad dates just flash before my eyes. But what is what is like the tea with asking people the most boring questions? It feels like an interview almost like how, I'm not going to want to fuck you if I know that your sister lives in Colorado. Like I just it's just not that's not going to happen. And I know. Then, ask me what my biggest fear is, you know, or like something like that. Don't ask me like so um when you were in second grade did you guys do um because we did the thing um, no where we had to do make turkeys out of our hands did you guys do that hey, maybe they're not trying to fuck you maybe they're trying to learn about you okay dan okay. don't you get soft on us dan you ever think don't. about that maybe no they're i understand genuinely. they're trying to learn about me but there's things that are more in depth and i and i understand wanting to be polite on a first date and tread lightly i understand that but i think sometimes i remember going on a date with a guy and he was also just like to his, just to him, it wasn't any, he was just boring. He was just a boring guy. Like he would tell me like stories about how he went to a store and like bought a t-shirt and he would be like, that's a story. Like he would think that was like information that was important to no. share, you know? And so, but I remember we were at dinner one night and he was like, I think the subject matter started getting into death and then he just tightens up like very much and he's like, I don't think we should be talking about this. Whoa. And I was like, oh, we are so inherently different in so many ways. We could never, because I was like, oh, this is getting interesting. Like, what do you think yeah. about it? Have you had anybody like close to you die that wasn't like, you know, a grandparent, like all the, that stuff. And it was, he, he was he was like a 1950s fucking housewife about no. it. He's like, mm, dear, we don't talk about those things at the dinner table. We keep it pleasant. Yeah. But it it's like, weird. you should be talking about death. You should be talking about what you guys would each do for a million dollars untaxed cold hard cash. Like that, yeah. you need to be talking about the real thing. I would be like, would you kill a man for a million dollars? Something like could that. Could be a stranger, could be a bad guy. What about there, it? There's something to me that's like really inherently interesting about those people though, because I feel like we are in a culture, especially like young people where we are sort of like constantly putting ourselves out. And I feel like this, there is this level of openness where when you have someone who's reserved to that level, I'm always wondering like, well, how did it come to be? that you're like this? Like, how did this come to happen? I don't know. Like, I've, I've gone on dates that I guess could have been considered boring, but I just feel like there's something kind of interesting about boring people. Like, you've gone through your whole life being like this, and there's people who, I, I had like one recently where I just couldn't stop thinking like, you have friends and you have like a family that you talk to all the time, and it's like, I, I always take that as a failure on my end to see things from a perspective where it could be like, oh, maybe I'm just different than you. And like there is a way to communicate with you where you would be interesting that I'm just not. You know what I mean? That I'm just not getting at. It. I totally understand what you're saying, because I think sometimes that about people as well. Where I'm like, oh, maybe I'm just not getting I'm not accessing this person in the right manner to get to that interesting core because I used to believe people were just inherently interesting. I used to think everybody was inherently good and interesting. Mm -hmm. Once, uh, <laughs> you know, good, definitely not because once you say, man, these comments on the internet, holy shit, you're like, wow, people are mean. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy, it's crazy. And I know it all comes from like a hurt place and, and whatnot, but I used to think that, uh, Everybody had this kind of unfettered potential that could make them interesting. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a background. Everybody has a tale that that can be, you know, whether it be like a family story or something. And I think some people just don't want to access that. I do think everyone's interesting, but I think accessing that part of themselves, that kind of gooey center is is hard sometimes. There's mm -hmm. been so many people that I have initially had the experience of being like, oh, that person's boring. And then you learn something, you're like, holy fucking shit. They yes. all their own cum every time. <laughs> No, no, like literally, I, I totally know what you mean. I remember meeting this guy who I thought he was just like, it was like a fucking, it was like talking to a fucking sponge. Like I was like, this is horrendous. Like you ever talk to somebody so boring that you're like, you're actually rude. 
because right. you're being actually so difficult right now to talk to that you're being actually uh, uncooperative socially, you know? And I found out that he like saved his brother from a fire when he was a child, when yeah. he was like 12 years old, saved his brother from their burning fucking house that their father had set on fire in order to kill their mother. And I was like, Yo, what? That's Lead your opener, with buddy. That. That's your Lead opener. with it. Let's go. But that's, that's that's the issue. I think a lot of people would open with that, and then you're just like, oh my god. Shut <laughs> no, the because fuck psychopath. Up. Yeah. yeah, because then you, I actually okay, high key. I did go on a date like a month ago, and that was mm, okay, bad. But they did low key open up with the like an egregious trauma, and I was just like, oh. And then they were like, yeah. So like, what'd your mom do to you? And I'm like, yeah. This isn't gonna work That's, out. Trauma bonding is a really, see that is also like within the category of lump, love bombing, I believe, because mm -hmm. you're like, tell me your deepest, darkest secrets so I could use it to take advantage of you right. and manipulate you. Well, also, <laughs> I think some people also do it with like, I, I don't, I, I think, yeah, people definitely do that. But I think sometimes people like don't know how to communicate. And then also I think drinking is such a huge part of our culture. So then people get wasted on these dates and then all of a sudden people are like, oh my God, you're so hot. <laughs> yeah, I've Has been your dad before. ever fingered you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it sucks, huh? <laughs> I didn't like it either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did like it? Tell me more. Like, what were you no. gonna say, Dan? I think there's been like this, and this is an incredibly unpopular opinion that I hold, but there's well. like been this war on small talk lately where everybody simultaneously in like the year 2000 was like, I fucking hate small talk. You know what I think it is? It's basic to hate small talk. It's it's, 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 it's very basic to hate It's very mustache talk. culture well, to all, like. Also, <laughs> yeah, it's very mustache and mullet culture to hate small talk. Because, <laughs> yes. But, and, and it comes from this core that's actually like kind of incredibly selfish where I think everybody thinks they're so interesting that they want to bypass the basic getting to know you part of a person because they're like, well, obviously, when I start talking about the cool things I think about, then they're going to think I'm so. And it's like small talk isn't there just to talk about the weather. It's to set a baseline of communication so you understand, oh, this is a sane person who exists kind of in the same universe as I do. It's a building but block. It's yeah. a building block. And it's like people go straight to this level of vulnerability sometimes I, I mean I'm talking about like I've lived in LA for like five years and I'm completely in a fucking bubble but so many people will start communication off at this insane level of like well here's everything that's personal it's like yeah that's not fucking healthy I you agree. shouldn't yeah. do that I don't think Bad. that no, your that's... opinion's controversial at all I think that it was you made a very astute point that I completely agree with because I think that you have to earn that. And then the funny thing is they do think that like, oh, all the things I have to share are interesting. And then the things that they're sharing are just Will Ferrell quotes. Oh right. God, and then they're like, God. anyway, but have you seen like the, and they're like, okay, this is not. It's also this instant gratification that I think people want where it's like, oh, the first date has to be the coolest, most interesting thing in the world. It's like, or fucking put a couple days into like the, the person I like, I, I've had this, uh, this person who's like kind of been in and out of my life in a relationship. But like when we started off, like the first date was was incredible but by both of our accounts like boring and bad but we were like yeah like i think we were both literally in place where we weren't like seeing any so we we're like yeah we'll just go on a date again whatever that eventually turned because like she's very quiet and shy and like i probably just wasn't presenting myself in a good way right away and she's ended up being like a great part of my life reoccurring and it's because i wasn't initially like fuck this boring piece of shit it's like well then, don't go on the date if you're if you're gonna be dissuaded by like one bad date with this person. That, that what a waste of time. I totally agree. I, yeah, I do too. I also feel like okay, this is a tendency that I have really had to work on. But I and you know what? Maybe I need to be in a second twelve step program. But more will be revealed in time. But I sometimes like you know like that high you get from from certain people or like or like you know like you get it's like. I don't know. I kind of like get off on that sometimes. And so I have to really watch myself where I'm like, okay, am I really liking the person or am I really liking how my nervous system is like a blaze right now? Because that's almost all of my relationships. I'm like, woo. Okay. Yeah. But I do, I do love what you just said. We're like, yeah, like I think honestly the first date, I, it shouldn't be long. I had a therapist one time say like, it needs to not be exciting. It needs to be an hour long and like just get to know that this, if it's a st complete stranger, just get to know them, get in, get out. And then if you like, that person or if you'd like like uh, their energy enough to see them again then go do that and then it can be like a little bit more exciting and then you can get into like some of the nuances and I was like oh okay I think that's really good advice because I, I think that the performer in me uh, prior to me being more therapized mm -hmm. I 
would go into the date giving 10 out of 10 myself. Oh, uh, and razzle dazzle to the nine. Yeah, it was like Liza Minnelli. I'm like, let's do this. <laughs> let's go. All of this stuff. Yeah. And it's it's kind of, and then when that person, um, you know, isn't really that interested, you feel very slighted, but in a way that, because you gave so much that wasn't ne necessary, you know, whereas like, I think that a boring, I've been on boring first dates where I'm like, well, this person is like interesting in a way. And like, we're kind of, we're being, sweet. yeah, we're being sheepish. We're both being sheepish in a healthy way actually you know that it that's the progress of communication i think when i think it's a big red flag when people come at you with you know well um so basically my dad stabbed my mom when i was like 18 and then because of that like i have been like you know i've been a sex worker for nine years now and because and you're like whoa dude like that's like that's cool that's all you but like i kind of you have to earn yeah. Getting to know somebody. I think we haven't created that, like earning getting to yeah, know somebody. It, it's yeah, because it's false intimacy. And I used to fall for it. I used to eat that shit up. Like if someone's like, yeah, my dad used to take the belt out. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, tell me more. Like, oh, my God, you're, we're, we're connecting right now. And now I'm like, Well, I think when a, when a man does that especially, yes, I think yeah. for a woman, she feels as though like, I've just tamed this wild beast who's telling me all of his fears and insecurities. And really, so he's like, how do I procure the most amount of pussy by so many people? <laughs> you know, exactly. I think that's, yeah. I don't know, even if they do that uh, unbeknownst to them, you know, I think, what were you going to say, Dan? Uh, I guess I was going to say, like, um, when it comes to, like, the in, quote unquote interesting first dates, like, I, I was at a party recently and this person was talking about, and they ha they're in, like, this open polyamorous so, like, which is obviously totally fine, but she's talking about, like, and I just went on this, like, I, I just went on this 18 hour date with a guy and it was so crazy. And we, and then she keeps talking and you're like, oh, this is kind of every story that you have. And it's kind of fucking boring because when you sort of like you establish yourself as this person who's like every everything I do is actually like really crazy and quirky. And like it's so my life is so like crazy and random. It's like that's kind of the most boring. And like it's monotonous. I like a person <laughs> who plays it kind of a little fucking close to the vest because it's like, oh, when you actually when that person actually does start opening up, it's not like they're, you know, fucking doing that with literally every single person they, you know, meet on the corner. It's like, oh, th this is just a person who's like kind of takes a second to ease in and you have to find a rhythm with somebody and it's like i don't like i it's just instant gratification people want where it's like i want the first date to be like electric and sparks fly and da da da, da. and it's like yeah well, fucking good luck building like a solid relationship on sparks i agree with that i think also same goes for sex i think the first time you have right. sex with somebody i don't mess it doesn't need to be out of the park it should be incredible. really bad it should last three seconds <laughs> the guy should come right away he should In say i'm hand. sorry i'm okay. sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry that is my love language he though whatever cry. a man says i'm sorry well i'm like i'm coming now. yeah <laughs> he should run away without his clothes and then call you and be like i fucking forgot my clothes i'm so fucking sorry that's how idiot. the first time should be yeah okay. yeah you want him oh. to act like he's philip seymour hoffman in boogie nights where he's like, fucking idiot, fucking idiot. that was the voice i used yeah wow yeah. you're so astute <laughs> thank you yeah, very much very, very no good. because i'm turning straight IMDb. again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean no i think that plenty of times i've had sex with uh, a guy and the first time was kind of lackluster because especially if you really like the person there's so much to lose so there's so much at risk mm -hmm. you know um like if i really liked somebody i would wait a while to have sex with them and then you know, you're so nervous and you're like, this has to go well because we have feelings for each other now and now it's the first time and we're doing it and it's just like very prescriptive sex. It's very like, okay, we'll just kind of do it like, I don't know, we'll just do it Christian style yeah. and then you <laughs> just do it and you're like, Not you're like, Christian cool, okay, style. we got it done. You know, you just, yeah. I've never had to have sex be the most incredible thing right off the bat. Um, it doesn't ever make me give up on somebody. If it's weird, that's when I'm like, if they do something wacky with me right it, off the like the first time, first time What's if they do something, of that? yeah, yeah, like, wait, something wacky. Something Give wacky. us an example, girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if that's too personal of a question. No, Dan, let's get into it. Come on, um, this guy. I think I've actually said it on this podcast before, but uh, this was I had a great date with this guy. I was super into him, and he stayed over the night. We didn't have sex. Um, wait, what date was this? Third or fourth? Okay, um, we still hadn't had sex yet. The mor next morning, he sleeps over next morning. So we're both sober, heads are cleared. Everything's good. We start fooling around, canoodling. Um, I'm going to go down on him. And then he just, well, one, he just goes, 
suck daddy's dick. Oh. And I'm oh like, my God. I don't know you. Like, we're not, yeah. this is the first time we've seen each other <laughs> naked. And it's in the morning, you fucking animal. Yes, it's the, it's daylight, it's noon. And like, we've, this, you have to, I think what's starting sex with somebody, start neutral. And then explore. And then build up. Build up, no, start I'm, neutral. I'm with you there. Start neutral. Well, is crazy. I, I think also like what, what we're experiencing is like sex positivity, such a great thing. But I think people misread sex positivity as like, so I should do every single thing that I like tell that I want to do everything I'm into the first time. Tell, and I, I've always kind of been a person who's like, well, I'll just fucking do anything. I don't give a shit. Like, just whatever. <laughs> but I, and, and it, I don't we're say that. Seeking, no. <laughs> I don't say that. No, I'm just like, what the fuck? OK, cool. Let, let's do it. I but, think a lot of people feel that way. I think men and women, I think everybody is like, I just want to be a cooperative member. You of this want, exchange you don't <laughs> want people to think especially in like modern culture i think there's, there's this pressure to be like well you have to do everything otherwise you're like a prude and you're or you're judgmental they judgmental. assume that you're judgmental because yeah. you're not into something but, and you're okay. like no i'm i'm not judgmental i'm just does does that doesn't turn me on i right. don't like what this guy kept saying suck daddy's dick he said it a thousand times right. and then he said Ooh. a bunch of times as i was doing it because i was like okay and i was doing it and then he said good girl so many times that he was stuttering. He's like, good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl, oh, yeah. good, girl good girl, girl. And I was just and like, so it's like not even for you. Like if you have a praise kink, then hell yeah. But it's like, that's not for you. That's for him. You And I was also like, bro, I don't and he told me, I know, I know kind of a red flag uh before that where he said that he's like, I'm trying to quit porn because it's been really taking up so much of my oh, life. Oh heavens. And I'm like, oh, he's like, you know, which I feel bad for, but I'm like, I don't and then it's like the first time we're we're sexually intimate with one another, he pulls out all of these like pretty radical things that like right. to me even though it's just like to him it's probably dirty talk and like light i'm like that's a little intense like i'm pretty you know you again i you start neutral and then you kind of build up and you can even have that conversation post coitus of like hey how do you feel about dirty talk you know like i think it's always good to to kind of talk about those things with somebody after you've already fucked them that's i think it's so important also i i like i think that like People get very shy or uncomfortable around sex, which um, it's going to be awkward and weird. Just lean in. It's fun. But um, yeah, when you're not communicating that you do like, OK, like the Army Hammer shit, like how he, you know, was like and all that wild stuff. If you're into that, too, go the fuck off. OK, but like if you're going to, again, whip that out the first time and there's no communication, it's like, wait, why are you dog walking me with an apple in my mouth and I'm blindfolded? Like, what's happening? Why am I walking on broken glass? Like, what's happening? But <laughs> They're like, I thought you wanted to come. <laughs> I dated a guy with a uh, with a um a breeding fetish, and he told me that while he was inside of me, and I was like, um, what's happening? What's a breeding fetish? So that, does that mean they shoot up the club? Yeah, no, he, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, he liked to come inside. Mm. Exclusive. If you're in my pussy, you're about to come. It's like closing time. Time for get on to out go of there now, cause you can't come in me, cause I am not really on the pill. Um, <laughs> See, I, but, I made the mistake of letting it be known that I had an IUD. No. And then afterwards, I was like, um, what was that? What was going on there? And then he was like, oh, so you're going to kink shame me? I was just vulnerable with you. And at that point in my life, my self esteem was just low enough for that line to really work. Yeah, we shouldn't have told guys the word kink shame because <laughs> really, I think that's done un untold damage and horrors to this uh, <laughs> of ours. No. I honestly agree. I think that a lot of times. No, it's fucked up because it's like, They'll be like, hey, you cheated on me. And they're like, listen, babe, don't kink shame me because I want, I believe in a non monogamous like relationship. Yeah. And you're like, but you're a liar. And they're like, I'm just kinky. And you're like, I don't know. There's a lot of false flags for self preservation that are happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on, on my end, it's funny because, like, I think for a long time, like, just with the messaging that I specifically got, which I think is kind of specific messaging just in the cities I lived in and the like crowds I found myself in. I always felt like, oh, you just have to do literally anything a woman asks you sexual. Like if if she's like, I just I want to piss on you the first night, you go, like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, Dan, did that happen? N I've ne uh no, the other way has happened. You've pissed on you've somebody. You've peed on someone. Dan, <laughs> be fun. Tell us. I can and tell you, you, I, have a, you pee, I have a pee story too. I can share if that helps. Yeah, please. I'll break it off, but I will say that a guy was into doing it to me and it was a guy that I was dating for like a year Whoa. and I never did, like he didn't reveal, it was like admin reveal afterwards. Whoa. Like, he's like, you know something I'm pretty into is like piss play. And I was like, oh, I'll pee on you. Like I was like, that's fine. He's like, no, 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 I don't want you to pee on like me. the other way. Yeah, and then he goes, I don't want you to pee on me. Because I, like, I was like, oh, I'll pee on you in the shower, like whatever. And he's like, sure. no, 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 I don't want to 
pee. On, he's like, I want to pee on you and I don't want it to be in the shower. I want to, and this is verbatim quote. He says, I want to put plastic on the ground Dexter style. Pee on you. <laughs> hey, fellas, here's a little tip. Um, if you're asking a girl to do something sexually, I would not reference a serial killer. Dexter style. Not <laughs> Dexter style. That is so, that's such a colossal disappointment. Show that's, that would, I don't know, hasn't been on air for, so that's really ages me too. I'm like, just like he's referencing a show from 2016. Right, right, right. No, here's the thing. I want to have sex with you like Steve McQueen, baby. <laughs> that's hotter, actually. <laughs> wow. That's hotter. Um, okay, now, PP story, let's go. Oh, it's nothing too detailed. I was with someone, they were like, <laughs> I, I mean I I've kind of always been like now now it's changed if I'm I've been with someone for a while or we've been seeing each other for a while then I'll kind of be like I'll do whatever you want uh, and at that point we had been together for a while and she was like yeah I want to try this and I was like yeah absolutely and I've I have gone because uh, maybe I do kind of come off as a little bit like reserved or whatever but like I have had she was kind of like shocked she's like really like you would and I was like yeah fuck <laughs> and, on her face yeah. Yeah. Whoa, Dan! We're gonna be on their feet. I don't know. They're Sprinkle chest, Dan. Like their what are we Amish? Or are we <laughs> fucking Mennonites? Feet on okay. Their face? See, I don't want fucking urine on my. No. Face. Okay, y'all can catch Dan on field. And that's your whole thing, but that and you have like a weird thing. We don't want to be pissed open? on your. Do you get pee in your eyes? They were closed. They were closed. Mouth open. Oh we my god. This, oh know? my god. You're not gonna be a politician. It's fine. You're fine. I don't remember. Yes, you do. You're envisioning it, and would you so close are your we. eyes to do it? I don't recall. I don't recall. You, you, you. Yes, you do. And you know what? Those eyes were closed. The mouth was open. I love them very smiling. much, and it was a building experience for the both of us. Don't hungry, hungry hippos. Okay, Let's go. it's giving Munch City. I'm screaming. Okay, all right. Well, we could yeah, uh, take the heat that. off you. Yeah. Ask another question. How about that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is actually. You know what? I actually, I would like to talk about this because somebody wrote in with a story, and I quite like this, and I think that. It would be nice to get your guys' advice. Okay. So, uh, okay. In 2015, this L.A. producer tried to roofie me at a show. I somehow got away even though I blacked out, but he got my number. Over months, he would text me, and one of the texts would say, Do you want to have a threesome with me and James Franco? Mm. And I blocked him. Now he has somehow found my Snapchat and wants to hang out. You, okay, uh, I haven't blocked him on Snapchat yet. What should I say before I block? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Just you just block. Just definitely don't say fucking anything at all. Or you could just send him a picture. No. Okay. No. Okay, fine, fine. No, we'll be healthy. finish your thought. <laughs> don't well, put the kibosh on it, Dan. I know, Dan. Wow, can... silencing so, women. So what? Now you're going to get canceled for that. So what, Dan? <laughs> you can pee on people and I can't say just send a fun picture of like hentai you can't, or like something like, I don't know, like maybe like Google like some like odd cartoon porn and you could send him like a really confusing... You know, like maybe like Shrek, like laid out. I don't know. Yeah, send them like that at ET porn. You know, send them like Sailor Moon getting railed by, you know, Winnie the Pooh or something like that. Something creative, some fun, something like eight. It's a conversation you know? starter and ender if you do it right. Which yeah. You would do it right because then you would just. Pop. I think also this, uh, like, hey, do you ever threesome with me and James Franco? It's like, there's no way in hell that this person is could procure that shit. You know what I mean? It's just no, a guy who kind of such... looks like James Franco. I know. Dude, by the way, I, I watched Rebel Without a Cause recently because I, I try to watch like, a lot of classic cinema. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. It's terrible. The knife fight is so funny. It's wow. one of the worst. It's so bad. Is that in in at the hall, the observatory, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. I mean, James Franco is James Franco. Whoa, Freudian slip. James Dean is quite good in it. Uh, Natalie Wood is incredible in it. Uh, Sal Mineo is great. The acting is fantastic. What is really crazy about it is that Natalie Wood's hubby, just to give you kind of succinct a uh, tale of it, Natalie Wood's boyfriend basically challenges James Dean to a race, so like a race of chicken. He dies in the process. Her boyfriend dies. Now, she lost her boyfriend in a horrific way. He just, cr in a fiery car crash. We're talking 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later, she's like, oh my God, that was crazy. What's up? James, like to him, what's up? Oh my God, yeah. James Dean. And fully having, later that evening, they are playing Tag? I'm not kidding. Hide and go seek. That's cinema. Baby. They are just having a fucking hoot. And she is all, I mean, it's like, didn't you just witness your boyfriend die to fucking fiery car crash? What in the hell is going on here? And she's ready to move. Honestly, does death make you guys horny? 
No. Really? It makes me kind of horny. Death? Yeah, because it's a reminder what of our of mortality. What talking about? What, like oh, suicide? No, like oh. losing somebody, I think. Sometimes if I've lost a, a friend or a family member, I like, maybe it's to distract myself from like the grief I'm feeling, but I'm like, I want to get smashed. Well, <laughs> honestly, Bert, I love that. And here's a, th- here's a tea on me. I have not ever lost anyone so far um, that I've been extremely close with. I've lost, Tough you know, f- friends and, and and people that I know, but like no one that, <laughs> this, now, now I feel like I sound like a kind, like no one that's really fucked me up that bad, Dan, <laughs> on to you. Okay. But like, I don't know. It's, none that's like spiked, uh, like a horny. Um, you know, the beauty thing, the beautiful thing about this is that uh, they're all, the people that are dead that would feel slighted by this, they can't even hear what you're saying right now. Okay. You but know? now I'm about to get fucking haunted up in here. <laughs> so you, just so you know, uh, the horniness is not the barometer for how bad the death is. No, I because. I don't think that's a one to one sort of. Yeah. Like when, you're, when your mom dies, you get real horny. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Just kidding. Well, because my aunt and my <laughs> uncle <laughs> my mom's committed dead. suicide. Mm-hmm. They weren't married, but there's like, okay. Anyway, but so my aunt and my uncle committed suicide, but like, I, I, didn't, I didn't have a close relationship with either of them. I was too young when my aunt did. I feel like she would have been really cool from what I've heard about her. So I, I, that probably would have made me horny. But then my uncle, he's kind of he's kind of like a bum, bummer. He's a bummer. Or he was, R.I.P. Um, but... That's such a sad thing to say about somebody who killed himself. Like, he was kind of a bummer anyway. Someone who's lived a life of clear misery. It's like, yeah, you sucked. Honestly, I can see why you do it. It, but no, but it like, adds up. The aunt, so sad. We lost a good one. We lost a smart one. We lost a beautiful inside and out. The uncle... <sighs> wow, a dud? You're gonna give him like a meh? Kind of a, a bum dog. He's mid. Well. You're yeah. saying his <laughs> It was it was a mid suey. What do you do that would make you say that? <laughs> okay, Dan, I like that we're getting to the real. Okay. Um so what did he do? I didn't like the way that he treated my uh, his his daughters, my cousins. Um, and I didn't his overall presence made me feel um uncomfortable and unsafe. To be around. Ooh. So you think maybe he was a bad guy? I think there's no proof. That also, this is a digital footprint, so I'm like picking it. I'm cherry picking my words here, but there, there's no like hardcore proof of any like bad things that he did. But from the from the few encounters I did have with this man, I, in a word, didn't. Or okay, a few words didn't like, and I also felt like the relationship that he had with his daughters was one that could be studied by child protective services. Mm. Doot, doot, doot. Anyways. Okay, so now we're kind of like, honestly, fuck this guy. You know what I mean? With all due respect. He's, with uh, all due respect to your uncle. You know, sorry to see you go, but, you know, maybe it was good. Literally, uh, last thing I'm going to say on this, and then we can literally <laughs> I tell it on I out know, of here. I'm like, I'm regretting I, what I'm saying. I'm no, like, I need to shut the fuck no, up. No, because I want like. more of that, actually. Okay, but so. <laughs> I just don't want you to feel bad about this guy dying that took his own life. And you're like, honestly, he kind of sucked. And maybe he was like, maybe he looked in the mirror one day and he's like, you know what? I kind of suck. I should fucking vamoose. No, but here's the tea. He's he's he was a dark haunted creep. Obviously, he's like dark and haunted. But for this story, I'm about to tell y'all. It's real quick. This alone is already like going to back up my my stance on him. But like one time at a family Thanksgiving, he go he just like disappears, and he's taking a bath in my grandma's fucking bathtub, not the guest bathtub, but her bathtub. And he's like, "Hey, come on in here," to his wife, and then she goes in there, my aunt, and they go in there. I don't know what the hell's going on, but. For that alone, you don't deserve empathy from me. Like, not at the family fucking Thanksgiving. What a fucking... What was he on, Molly? What I was he right. doing? And you know what? And if he was, fuck him for not sharing. So... <laughs> That's a crazy thing to do. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, that almost makes him more charming. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah like, that's, that's fuck, a charming now story. I'm back. I they, do kind of like that. Damn, a guy who's okay. like, I want to take like a bath. He's like Cosmo Kramer at that gonna, point. He's like, I'm going to take a bath. Taking yeah. baths at his grandma's house. I'm like, you literally are when Cosmo Kramer. When the food Kramer. just came, you don't want to eat the food first? He didn't even munch. Well, if you can't, because you got to, if you eat and then you swim, you're going to get a little tummy. You got to cramp. Get, okay. Get cramp up. Well, this threw me through a damn loop. <laughs> you thought after that story, we would be like, oh yeah, it's good that he killed himself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's well, between you and Chris. Honestly, I'm I'm back to not supporting you actually. Okay. Again. Wow. All right, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna move right along, actually. Um okay. I feel okay, so <laughs> we got okay, this is kind of a fun one. So somebody asked uh situation ship and behaviors on Instagram. So let's say you're seeing somebody, you're dating uh somebody and 
seems like you're not in a monogamous relationship with them. And let's say they do things that, I don't know, are a little uh, sketchy on the line. Maybe they're sending heart emojis to chicks that they would never fuck. Um, stuff like that. Don't know why. Why do guys do that? Do you? I know I'm not trying to put this on no. you. Like speak for all men. I'm gonna sound like Clint Eastwood, but like, what the fuck is a situation? Ship? <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is that? What in Gran Torino? Yeah. You know, a situation ship when you're like dating someone with no labels. I want to say it for okay us. Uh, like fucking, I'm a geriatric millennial. I'm gonna say it like this. It's basically like you're casually dating somebody and there has not been a conversation of monogamy or commitment. Okay. So you are maybe, and maybe this is, I, when I think situationship, I also think that this is somebody who perhaps will never be that person to you because you're not saying, hey, I just sure. started seeing somebody. You're saying, oh, this is somebody who maybe I've had like a history with for a year and it's been kind of on and off, which I've never understood people doing that. Um, I can understand having like, casual sex with somebody who's like maybe a kind of friends with benefits. I can understand that. I can't understand actually having feelings for somebody and then letting, I don't know, just having them exist casually in your life. That would give me so much anxiety. Right. Well, yeah. So if you're saying a situation in which like you're seeing someone, but you haven't discussed the like uh, boundaries of the relationship yet and their action online makes you uncomfortable, right? That's your fault. It's your fault. It's not their fault. They're, they, you can be horny online if you want to be. I, I do kind of agree with yeah. you on that. I do think that it's tough. It's tough because we don't want men to be creepy. I think that straight women have a hard time with the, how creepy men can be, and especially in the confines of the internet. And it makes us feel very uncomfortable, and it makes us— Then uh, don't see that guy. Then don't see that guy, yeah. too. And I also think that here's maybe an unpopular opinion. I don't think that anybody owes you anything. I think that's— sure. I think when you, I've had girlfriends who've been like, you know, I went on a date with this guy and then he like, you know, he ghosted me. And I'm like, eh. it's not well, real. It's, I, don't, it's I just don't. It's bad to do. Mm. Like ghosting is. It's, it's, and I, I've definitely like done stuff like and it, it but it is like. It's not polite. You should, mm -hmm. you should work to not do that. It's not polite. Yeah. But I will say that if a guy, a guy is not, a, guy, a man or a woman or anybody is not an asshole if they don't want to date you. No, of course not. That's what I think a lot of people have a hard time digesting that fact. I think that they think, like, so-and-so doesn't want to date me, that guy's a fucking asshole. Now, there's a difference between somebody who kind of romantically coerces you into, because I've had that where somebody, like, says, of like, oh, my God, you're amazing, and they have future talk where they're like, I can't wait till you meet, like, my sister and stuff like that. And you're like, all right, cool. Like, this guy wants something. And then they kind of pull out, and you're like, what? why are you fucking why, – why were you saying all of this this yeah. uh, stuff then? It's true. But, you know, I, I recently – I got a text that really, like, changed my whole perspective on it where it was a woman. We went on, like, two dates. I, I felt like everything was great. It was fun. And then she sent me a message, and she was like, hey, like – you're great. I had a really good time, but uh, I just uh, don't feel a romantic connection with you. And I think we should like maybe just be friends or like move or whatever. And I was like, oh, you can just do that. Like, yes, it, it felt so good. I, I messaged her back right away. And I was like, thank you so much because you saved me like a week of like asking questions about the whole. It's like, oh, yeah, great. Thank Now I know. Uh, and and the, you'll come up against this where women will be like, oh, well, I don't know how a guy is going to react in that situation. But it's like, I mean, in in this case, I think in honestly, most cases, that's a completely justified and honestly, like kind thing. I've actually do. done that. I've done yeah. that exact it's thing. very kind. When I was online dating, I would go on a date with a guy and he was kind, new gentleman. And, you know, we'd spend time getting to know each other. I really didn't feel... Any sort of connection, he asked me out again, and I've done, I've done this with a few guys, and I've been like, "Hey, it was really nice to meet you. Um, I, you know, I think we're looking for something different, uh, but you know, thanks." And all I'm saying in my experience, and maybe also because uh, I don't like dating dirt bags. I don't. I am luckily have pretty good taste in dudes in terms of dating. I've never dated a guy who's like super duper shitty. Um, but there have always been like, "Hey, thanks so much." Like. Good luck to you. And I've had that happen to me where I was talking to a guy online. And this was something that he didn't even owe me because I didn't even hang out with him 
at all. We just were like chatting and we're going to hang out. And then I think it was like a few months later or something like that. He's like, whatever. We, we were trying to hang out for a few months. It didn't really work out. And then I think I reached out and was like, hey, I'm in town if you want. And he's like, hey, I'm actually started seeing somebody and everything. And, you know, but I really wish. And I was like, that's great. Like, yeah, that's such like mature. It's really nice. kind. Yeah, it's kind. It's mature. It's great communication. And I think all of this all boils down to like, again, acceptance and having enough self-worth to like if someone is exhibiting behavior that kind of gives you the ick like in that sense where you feel like you're being disrespected okay then sister queen dust your or, or king whatever like dust your knees off get up and then just keep it pushing keep it moving and yeah i think it's just tough like i understand though like it is a turn off for me when guys are a little thirsty on instagram especially most, when they are like people. you know dating somebody it's it just it feels it feels shitty because you're also like in your mind what's going on and I've talked to other guys about this and they're like honestly <laughs> and I'm not saying every guy thinks this but I've heard guys say you know in a dumb way I feel like that girl might see my like and see me at some point and know that I liked her thing yeah that's insane that's really crazy and I'm like are you so they are hedging their bets and like no of course of I mean it's not like realm yeah. I mean, it's not like all innocent, you know, but like also again, like if, okay, so if you're not in a committed uh, relationship with someone and they're doing that, uh, yeah, like to what you were saying, no, you can't do anything about that. But if that is your partner and they're doing something that you find disrespectful, then yeah, I think you can have a conversation. 100%. And also there's like, on, I mean, you can be unethical and have it not be like a complete discrepancy within the confines of the relationship, but the your actions are still that of a person who should uh, find Christ. You know, like, well, like if you're just fucking. Not, I knew not, you were going to get into finding Christ. I, know. I was just waiting for that other shoe to drop. Yeah. From the P, I was waiting from it. Well, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it. I, I feel like the tone of this podcast is very like sex positive, and it is funny to come on a podcast like that and be like, I think Jesus is kind of the way at the end of the day. But, um, all right, which I smash or pass, Jesus? Pass. Wow. Somebody asked, best sex music. Uh, and, and I'm not, I'm actually not kidding here. Uh, like lo-fi hip hop to chill and study to. Study? Yeah. Well, whatever, like lo-fi, like whatever. Why did the word study even I, can I say come something? into this? I was so on board. And then when you said study, I just, just wanted to say No, that's laughing. the name of the playlist on YouTube. I'm not making this up. Whoa. Yeah. It's called lo-fi hip hop. Okay. So you go know. on, you go yeah, on thank YouTube you. and you don't do like a Spotify moment. YouTube, but why YouTube? That's very Android of you. It's what I mean. You can go. You can go on Spotify too. Like it's it's whatever. Lo-fi, no words. That's I feel. See, that almost sounds like um. You don't. Have to, it sounds like Enigma or something. You know what I mean? Like that's like when you have no words and then I don't really like, see the point of having music playing unless you're trying to cover up the sounds of having sex. I say I almost. I don't really fuck to music. I almost. Yeah. Never fuck to music. Yeah. It's does? like fucking with the TV you on. You have to be 62 something. to fuck to music. <laughs> no, or a child. You got to be real oh, young. I might have it. Not a child. I mean, that. I mean a child. To me, a child. Yeah, yeah. So they shut the fuck up while you. No, I just said it. So they can't hear them. Right. That's right. Hey, no. Okay. I think that. Okay. Great. Well, I've implicated myself in yet another crime. Um, I. <laughs> I think that no music during sex is usually the way to go. I think, I mean young people. I think that young sure. people that are a little at uncomfortable. At their parents' houses. Can I tell you a really funny story that a friend of mine told me recently? Wait, at this that, point, we're begging. Go. So a girlfriend of mine, I'll keep her anonymous. She told me that she, this guy at her work who had always had a crush on her, who was really cute and really sweet, was you know, kind of putting, like, interested in her. And then he, like, moved apartments, and she's like, you know what? I'll fuck this guy, whatever. He's so sweet. He was a lot younger than her. No. Um, she's, like, in her early 30s. He was, like, 19, okay? Bah! Whatever. Mm. Who cares? I'm legal. It's fine. And he was really into her, and she was like, fuck it. Yeah, I'll do this. So she goes over to his place, and he puts on Pitbull's, <laughs> you know, the song that's, like, the one with the, the hotel fucking yeah, oh, whatever. Hotel, oh, hotel. meet me in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool. So she, I like that. Meet so me in the hotel. Okay, yeah. Yes. She's getting fucked to yeah. meet me in the hotel room. Here's the thing. One play one song playlist. So it just plays oh, Nina. on loop over and was over this a, again. Is this a white guy? Nope. No. Okay. Well, that fucking awesome. Though. Yeah, he That's was a he was a Latin guy. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god, fuck! Are you kidding me? That raw. <laughs> I hate it when not people, me getting mad. If you're if you're like thirty, if you're like thirty and you're having sex with a nineteen year old, it's like already I'm kind of like yeah, let's not make this a habit or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But also, definitely don't get upset when they do some nineteen year old <laughs> shit. I you're know fucking, you're a nineteen year old kind of like you're sw- you're fucking a thirty two. It's like yeah, you're gonna put on Pitbull, baby. You're gonna. And- f- Fucking feel it's like getting room. mad at a 19 year old for like texting while fucking you. It's like, right. come on, that's what they do. That's what you do. <laughs> that's what they do. But I, well, the, it's almost like they're not fully developed in their brain. Yeah, it's so crazy. The funniest thing is that she's like, the, the thing is that like I, the song would end and I just remember the beginning of that song so yeah. much that it just would come because it has that like very intense, like, yeah, horn. build up. Yeah, build, like build up. And she's like, it's just it, every, I'm like, what did you do in that moment? Like, she's like, I just froze. Like, I was having like a trauma response. And it was really, just like, yeah. You know? Well, she probably was doing a lot of reflecting in that moment too, like, and you're just like getting like you're like your hair all like. Well, how many up, songs like, did? How many plays? That's what I wanted to ask. I think she's complete. It was like a car accident to her. She's like, I don't even remember what happened, and okay, so that's such a lie. It was for okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's I don't even if you could even last that long. The song is like if it's like a pop song. What is it like two and a half minutes long? You know, so I think pro- Pitbull probably runs it pretty long. I did have a he has a lot to say. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I did have a pretty bad music sex ex- sex experience one time where um, this song I put it on a playlist that was on shuffle and it was just kind of like Afrobeat like world music and it was like pretty so it was pretty good. Like I was like, this is a good playlist, but then I had a song in there that was not vetted and it literally starts off. It's this really fucking sick like Nigerian like. Um, like almost like rap song. Mm-hmm. It's sick, but it starts off. I'm not exaggerating. It goes mm-hmm. literally like that acapella, like that. And I, I'm having sex with this guy, and he literally stops and he goes, "What is this?" <laughs> And I was like, I, I don't know. I'm so sorry. And I'm like rushing to my phone that to like hit next. Really I'm like, fucking funny. Oh I my god, that's so fucking funny. Good. I actually have a sex playlist that's actually pretty good. It's called You Can Have It All, and it has a lot of like kind of melodic, like Yola Tango, a little bit like some like soul, a little bit of funk. You don't want something super percussive. You don't want something really dramatic or intense uh i'd say rock music is a no-no with uh with that maybe something singer songwriter i fucked to leonard cohen that's really good okay you know like in the candlelight you know getting fucking railed to leonard cohen gorgine but uh music in general it's you know it, it could go either way i'd say it's just it's better to have nothing it depends on if you're a guy with leather bracelets i feel like rock is great yeah, but imagine like getting fucked to somebody and you're like Tool I just, is on or something. Awesome. I just legit got sick. Oh, I love Tool. Okay, that's like the that's like the favorite band of like cops. I feel like <laughs> you know, I'm like, screaming. No, yeah. I don't feel. I I think I think cops are a little bit more like Lamb of God. You know what I mean? Oh, ew, you're Tool's, so right. Tool's more like melodic. I feel. Ugh, Tool's like white. Tool's definitely white guys with dreadlocks, kinda, and they're like, but in like big baggy t-shirt. Uh, Caucasians, but I feel like cops. Big baggy t shirt Caucasian sounds like an ethnicity. Well, yeah. <laughs> and also like a, a band type of person. It is, I mean, it absolutely <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Here's okay, here's my tea. I feel like if we're about to do it and you put on music, I'm going to be like, mm. No, no. But if music's on, like, let's say like we're cooking dinner and the music's on, and then we're and then and then you know whatever, and then things you know lead to you old fucking. And the music is still on. Okay, let's do it. I agree. But don't, I, I don't like manufactured intimacy. May it be a conversation or with sex. Yeah, we'll put, yeah, manufactured intimacy. I agree with that. I think when I was, the move that I did when I was younger of putting on music is because I think that I was insecure and I wanted to create this entire kind of perfect uh, snow globe almost experience where I'm just like, okay, the candles are, you know, I have all of, <laughs> I have these Veluspa candles that are lit. We got a like little bit low lighting with like a red light bulb and a blue light bulb in the other corner. And then I'll put some like, you know, music on. And then it was just very much so I could come across as, and this was again, insecure, like mid twenties, Nina of just like, I really wanted to be perceived as like, they're fucking a cool creative girl. Right. Oh, so yeah. fucking cringe. Right. No, but we've all been there. And like, honestly, when you know you were just telling that haunted story about your friend who just fucked the kid, like, I honestly, I did that too because 
I, I, I was in the position of, I think I was 20 and I was hooking up with a 36 year old and I thought I like, I wanted to like appear older than I was. And I was but, like, he knew how old I was, but I like wanted to, I don't know, just seem more like sure. worldly. Yeah. Y'all yeah. know what I'm saying. Okay. So anyway, so then he comes over and then the thing happened to me though, where I don't know. Maybe it like reached the end of a playlist, and then something else happened. But then it was like a pretty, it was a pretty okay playlist for being like a cringe twenty year old. But then all of a sudden, like a uh, a song by The Weekend came on, Ugh. and it was not a vibe. And you it mean was Tedros. <laughs> <laughs> Tedros came on, and I was like, and I did not come, and it was really. And then he started like making fun of me, and I was like, oh my god, let me yeah. just put my pussy away. When, when I am admit like the things that the fantasies that I had when I was younger of what I thought, like I literally wanted a guy to be like, oh, you like Ethiopian jazz? That's so fucking cool. Like I wanted, yeah. Like, yeah. it's so grotesque. Could you imagine like now you're an adult, just imagine how fucking shitty that guy, it's like, whoa, <laughs> you actually listen to like music? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that guy sucks. Crazy, I know. Anyone well, who would appreciate that quality to the extent where they would be like, that's amazing, is a fucking idiot. And a major douche lord, but I- Welcome to a lot of guys I'm dating. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, like I, I had a, I used to have a huge insecurity that I was stupid. And so I would do everything in my power to be like, to come off like really, really intelligent. And I just most of the time just seemed like, you know- Try hard. Oh, a pick me show. Yeah, like yeah. just so, just so whack. I think I did that as well, where I just misuse high vocabulary words to be like, I have quite a good lexicon, don't I? Yeah. You know, and it's just so like, just. And they're like, well, I don't know what she's the, doing. The okay. amount of times I said the word pernicious. No. Yeah. Kill me, that's dude. That's a cool one. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, like, a good one. Dan starts using it on dates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The amount of times I'm feeling very pernicious. Today, yeah, maybe. my pull string word was like utilitarian. I was like the utilitarian, like utilitarian. It was just that was fucking embarrassing. I still do that shit sometimes. Let's be real, uh, guys. With that, I think we got a wrap. This is fun. This is fun, right? Yeah. This is um, so fun. This was so fun. You guys were such fantastic guests. Mm -hmm. So wow. smart. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm smart. You guys cool. are really smart. Yeah, I'm really smart. And you guys are both very attractive. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow. I liked that compliment more than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> that's where my um that's what yeah, that's important to me now. Uh, do you have anything to plug, Harbor? Um, honey, not really. I mean, I have a podcast, we already know what it is. Tea time, that's what it is. Gabby Lamb. It it's hilarious. It's great. Listen to Gabby's episode as well of Girls on Guys. Yes. She's fantastic. Um great. Oh, uh, can you plug your Instagram? Yes, it's uh, I don't remember. it's Harper Rose. Man, you had a you had a real uh, Mitch McConnell. I was right like, there. what? He was like, <laughs> oh no, yeah. Harper Rose D, that's me. And Dan, what do you got coming up? Um the listen to the uh, Michael McDonald's Greater Works, uh, if that's what it takes, listen to that album and his two Motown cover albums. They're really good. Okay, cool. Are you plugging yeah. someone else's uh, Michael McDonald, yeah. Michael McDonald. P not enough people listen to him. Michael McDonald looks like George Lucas. Yeah, he totally does. A lot. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to say something, and I just want to be vulnerable right at the end. I have not understood almost like a lot of the references that you guys have been making, and I've been smiling along, and I don't understand that. Can I just let you know? That's intentional. Okay, and I love that. You guys planned that, and now I'm gonna kill myself. That's, that's and that's tough. on my uncle. Okay, no, I'm happy to. Um, I, I love to explain anything that you didn't understand. Okay, <laughs> that's my that's my love language. Uh, guys, <laughs> thank you. Honestly, just explaining things to people, I'm like, you need me. Okay? <laughs> Feels really good to feel needed. Honestly, They're like I don't understand all these esoteric references. I'm like, don't worry, I'll clear those right up. Yeah. Anyway, okay, we're gonna unpack Dexter now. Yeah, yeah. Though no, that's what you, the TV show. <laughs> okay, okay. It's we'll talk about it off. Uh, I fell. I fell off after <laughs> Lou Reed. I, that's I knew all wow, about those at the beginning of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was a bit like, whoa. <laughs> Lou, that's like, I want to see that was kind of a deep cut too. Okay, well. a little bit, I think. Guys, thank you so much for uh, listening. Really appreciate you guys. If you guys want to ask any questions whatsoever, uh, stories, whatever you got, please DM us. I'm always happy to answer them, and I'm always the one I'm there sifting through them. So, uh, I love you guys so fucking much. <laughs> I fucking love you. Okay, is well, what balling? is this bond? I love you guys. Okay. <laughs> Have a great day. Overnight. Goodbye. <laughs> Never knew how to stop Our talking. Our guy's like, I keep forgetting we're not in love anymore. You know that one? I keep forgetting things will oh, oh.